CCRCs, what are they? Well, they're continuing care retirement communities. Why should you care about them? It's a big part of your transition. You know, Merce and I have had a tremendous amount of people asking us, how do these communities work? What's the best time to enter? And so we went out and we have found an expert in Emily Smith, and she breaks down the ins and outs of these types of communities. Now, Merce and I want you to always let us know if you have any questions that you would ever like us to cover on our podcast. If so, we have set up a texting line and you can text us at 1-984-207-1753. Again, that's 1-984-207-1753. One seven five three. Text us any questions. We'll look forward to answering them. We hope you enjoy today's show. Well, we are excited today for our podcast. We uh, have had in our helping folks with retirement issues and thinking through how to have a secure retirement. One of the things that comes up for Merce and I on a very regular basis is someone is um, they've transitioned or they're transitioning into retirement and then their minds go, you know, I'm doing really good now. I feel good about where I'm at right now. But at some point, I think I want to start looking at what is called a CCRC, a continuing care retirement community. And they said, but you know, there's so many options out there. And Merce and I have worked through with numerous clients on what that looks like and how to do it. So we have gone out and we have found uh, one of our, our local experts, Emily Smith, who is with one of the local facilities here in Raleigh. And we just really asked her, could you come on to our podcast and help our listeners get a good understanding about how all this works? And so Emily, Merce, and I both just want to say thank you so much for coming on and helping us and educating us on how this all works. Well, it's my pleasure. I'm so happy to be with you this morning. This is great. So Emily, if you could just to give us a high level before we dive into the nitty gritty of what a CCRC is, what, what it all comes with, how it works and everything. Can you describe for us what it is that you do? Sure. Uh, so I am the director of sales and marketing at Glenair Retirement Community, which is in Cary. And my role is to assist folks that are interested in joining our wait list. And then also it's my job when apartments or cottages become available that I am their first point of contact that would help them uh, work through work through that transition. So I'm, I'm the one that's making the offer, uh, offering them an address, and then helping them through the move-in process. Great. So we know that in, in, in here in Raleigh, we have folks that listen, not just in the Raleigh Cary area, um, that, you know, there, there is a lot of different options. So could we just kind of dive right in here and kind of get into this? Sure. Could you describe for us like a high level, what is a CCRC and kind of what's the, what's the options out there in the world? Yes, absolutely. Well, there are certainly a lot now, um, and that has not always been the case, but definitely here in our area and in the state of North Carolina, um, there's a lot of, of great options, and, and I'd like to think that there's really something out there for everyone. Um, I'd be happy to just give you a, a quick overview of the different models that there that are out there for a continuing care retirement community. You're going to hear us. You're going to hear us say CCRC a lot for the rest of the time. But what we are referring to is a continuing care retirement community, and what that means is that you're moving into the community independent and in good health. But as your needs change, knowing that you would always receive first priority into those higher levels of care. So there, there is a price for peace of mind, it turns out. <laughs> um, because in our case, that's really what our residents are, are buying into um, is, you know, just that peace of mind, knowing that their care needs would be met for life. So there are five different uh, contract types. The first one is called an extensive contract. And what that means is typically it means that you're paying a higher price up front, but if your levels of care change, you would still be paying the same monthly fee. So for example, um, and I'm not basing this off of a community, this is just to give you an, an example. So let's just say that you pay 
750000 for your entrance fee to move into a community, but then your monthly fee, whether you're in independent living, assisted living, or skilled nursing, that number would never change. That's an extensive contract. A modified contract, which is the one I'm most familiar with because that's the, the contract that we use for Glen Eyre and Presbyterian Homes, and a modified contract is where you also pay an entrance fee, but then your monthly fee changes based on the higher level of care. So your entrance fee might be smaller. So for example, instead of that 750000 for an extensive contract, instead you might pay $200,000 uh, for your, your entrance fee. But you can expect that if you ever needed a higher level of care, assisted living or skilled nursing, that you would be paying a higher fee. However, part of your entrance fee is considered prepaid medical so if you asked any of, uh, if you asked a Glen Eyre resident, they would say, well, that's my insurance. And I've, at first I didn't quite understand what they were referring to, but again, they're paying for that peace of mind knowing that because I've paid this entrance fee, Glen Eyre would give me a discounted rate if I ever needed those higher levels of care. Um, so the healthcare related services, they're provided at a subsid subsidized rate or in our case, we also offer our residents 14 free grace days every year in our skilled nursing if they needed it. Okay. And then there's also a fee for service, which means that you pay an entrance fee. But then if you ever needed those higher levels of care, you would pay the full price for those. So there's no discounted rate on that. Um, and then there are equity communities here in the area, which means that when you pay your entrance fee, you really are purchasing real estate. So you would own your home in that case. Whereas at Glen Eyre, a lot of people will say, so Glen Eyre is a buy-in. How much does a cottage cost? And I always have to be very careful with that language because you don't actually own your home at Glen Eyre. But again, you're purchasing a, a contract for care, if you will. And then the last is a rental, uh, which means that there's really no contract. It just means that you would rent your home as you go. Um, however, there's no guarantee you know, that if you ever needed a higher level of care, that that would be, that, that would be provided to you. Um, but that is, you know, certainly an option that some people are comfortable with as well. Okay. So, so five different levels of contracts. And to me, it kind of seems like you, you pick one in a way based off of how much, how much risk you want to cover upfront as you're moving into the community. So you can, That's right. pay, you can pay a lot more upfront to kind of guarantee a, a very expected uh, way that everything's going to play out, or you can mm -hmm. risk pay a little bit less up front, or maybe little to nothing up front, and then it could be a little bit variable as you as you live in that community. Does that sound fair? Yep, that's exactly right. So, what would you say would be? I know you mentioned Glen Eyre doesn't do one or two of these, but what would you say overall in the in the world of CCRCs? What it, what would be the more common that you see come into fruition as far as the, the different levels of contracts? Um, I would say that the two most popular um, or that I hear of the most would be the modified contract, which is, again, what we do. Um, also, Springmore in Raleigh. I know they are also a modified contract. Um, and then fee for service. Um, that's another popular one. Um, but honestly, beyond that, truly rental, um, especially more and more so lately, we're seeing more and more rental uh, properties pop up. And those are for folks that, you know, maybe they aren't sure that this is where they're going to land. You know, maybe they're going to follow their children around the country or, um, you know, so there, there's certainly less commitment uh, when you go with a rental property. And we're seeing more and more of those being built. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when, when I think about this um, idea of the CCRC, you mentioned something right up at the beginning. You said you have a wait list. And I find that whenever we're talking with clients um, and we're talking this through, many of them tell us, you know, that they're on the wait list. Can you kind of give <laughs> us a sense? I'm, I'm assuming that right now that's a big deal, probably across the area. But we can talk about, you know, we, you know, just looking at your facility. I mean, I, I'm assuming since you said that there are wait lists out there and kind of what does that mean and how does that work? 
Yes, absolutely. Um, there are, especially in, in our state, there are pretty hefty uh, wait times out there right now. Um, and of course, they all vary. And what what it entails to join a wait list is very different for different communities. Um, for us, it's actually um, a very low commitment, I would say, to join the wait list at Glen Air. It's $1,200 to join. And what that is, is a $200 application fee, which would leave the, the depositor with a $1,000 refundable deposit. So really, you know, it's they would get everything but $200 back if they decide not to move forward with Glen Eyre, or we would put it towards their entrance fee when they come in. There are some communities out there where, you know, it, it does entail a little more. Maybe it's a $5,000 deposit or a $10,000 deposit. Um, but for us, it's really just to secure your name um, on the wait list. And, um, you know, our, for us, it's very flexible. A lot of people will say, you know, I, I know your wait list is long. I want to go ahead and get on it, but I have no plans of moving in anytime soon. And my response to them is, Bravo. Good for you, because that's really what everyone should be doing. Um, because of these long wait list times, it really is crucial um, to plan ahead. So, um, you know, because oftentimes, too, I mean, every week I get those calls, too, where someone says, we've decided it's time and we'd like to make a move in the next six months. And unfortunately, they don't like what I what I have to say after that, which is, um, you know, right now the shortest wait that we have at Glen Eyre is really for our new expansion um, that is is set to be open in the spring of 2023. So you're looking at two and a half years, um, and then anything beyond that, a, a one bedroom apartment that's 700 square feet, seven 750 square feet, um, is a four to five year wait. So um, it's real too, um, because I also get that. A lot of people will give me a hard time and say, there's no way. <laughs> um, but it's, it's true. I mean, they are, they are, they are that long. So, um, yeah, I've driven, I live in Cary and so I've driven in that downtown area and I've seen the expansion plans and everything. So you are doing mm -hmm. a pretty, pretty large overhaul there, which ultimately is going to be good for the community in the area and yes. having more access to, to a facility like yours. So my, my next question is, you know, you mentioned with CCRCs, you have to be, and I, I think I heard this, right? You should, you should be in good health before you're mm -hmm. actually moving in there. And I assume that's some type of requirement, but what, what I'm wondering is what is that standard of, you know, what is good health? How does, how does Glen Eyre or CCRCs in general define what good health is just for yes. anyone that's listening? Maybe they have, you know, certain issues right now, um, but does that kick them out of qualifying for something like this? That's a great question. So, you know, one thing I would start by saying is that when you join a wait list, it is certainly not a guarantee that you're going to become a resident um, in that community because there is a health evaluation. And for us, when you join the wait list looking, you know, four years out, we just ask for really your, your, um, your, medical situation in your words, um, because it's really not necessary to, to ask for doctor paperwork that, that far in advance. But then once we make you an offer, we do ask for doctor paperwork from your physician. And then there is an interview um, that is conducted by our social worker and our director of nursing. And really what we're looking for is just to make sure that the services that we're going to be offering you are more than enough to meet your needs. So there's no checklist per se of, can you do this? Can you do that? Um, a diagnosis would not necessarily keep you from entering the community. I get that question a lot. Well, what if I have a, a Parkinson's diagnosis or something like that? But really what it comes down to is where are you at? in your diagnosis at the time of offer. If you're still able to live independently, that's really what we're looking for. Yeah, that was my, my next question. So basically, in a, in a community like yours, you can't enter, or I'm, I guess I'm asking, can you enter if you are needing assi um, assisted living now, right, at, as you enter? So every community is different. Um, some licenses won't allow you to accept a resident coming directly into assisted living or skilled nursing. At Glen Eyre, you can. 
our license does allow us to do that. However, it's rare because our first priority is always to our independent living residents who have paid that large entrance fee to get in. Um, so imagine if, you know, we were taking a, a bunch of outside uh, residents into assisted living and skilled nursing and then turned around and told an independent living resident, I'm sorry, we don't have room. That wouldn't go over very well. <laughs> right. So that's something that our, our care team and our healthcare center do an amazing job of is to make sure that we always have enough room in our assisted living and skilled nursing, which is why a lot of times we have rooms available um, just for those, those bumps in the night, the things that that nobody was planning on. Yeah, and I'm going to have a probably really tough question here because I know whenever we're talking with folks just about the idea of even like a, a long-term care insurance or protection, the question comes about, well, when is the best time to do this? And that's, that's a tough, tough question because circumstances vary. But I guess this is a big question. Do you have like kind of a scenario where you say, recommend if a person knows in their heart that they want to go to a CCRC and they're looking at that like what what age is kind of the ideal age to start looking at that because you know we do have a like you said a, a little bit of a wait list here for at least a couple of years mm -hmm. so is there kind of like a, a a premise you know somebody's asking this question and they're 60 and they go I want to wait till I'm whatever 70 I mean but but is there any kind of a gauge there that somebody could have well, a lot of our residents that are moving in, they are certainly consulting their financial advisors to see, you know, is this a good move for us to go ahead and do this now? Um, you know, something that I always, I want to say I... I I, I am frustrated a little bit because oftentimes we will have prospects that will say, well, I, you know, I, I still am enjoying my life. Well... <laughs> We hope that you'll really enjoy your life here at Glen Air, you know. Um, so I think that, um, I mean, 20 years in the industry, I think that's always a misconception that I'm always going to be fighting, right? Is that, you know, really Glen Air is, it's a, a truly vital uh, community. You know, we have residents that are still flying planes. Um, so that's not someone that that I would say is just kind of thrown in the towel, um, <laughs> you know, um, and that's what we want. Um, and that's what our other residents residents want to, you know, they want to be around like-minded people that are still very active and engaged. So it truly is different for everyone. I will tell you, Raiden, that right now our average age of entry is about 74, if that gives you an idea. Um, we are anticipating with our new expansion that that is going to drive that average age of entry down quite a bit. Uh, we're finding that people are saying, hey, what are we waiting for? This is awesome. You know, this is a resort. This is a, a, a cruise on land. Let's do it. <laughs> so we are, we are seeing more and more of that. It's, it's definitely a, a very, a very changing, changing industry right now. Yeah, very good. Yeah, on top of that, so is there is there any type of age requirement before you can apply? So I know there's there's some type of there's some neighborhoods that are like 55 plus and you mm -hmm. can have to be at least 55 to enter this neighborhood to buy a house or property in that place. Is there anything like that with CCRCs or Glen Eyre specifically? Uh, Glen Eyre specifically, and I do believe in general, I think there there is an age requirement. At Glen Eyre, the age requirement is 62. Um, and if you're a couple, um, the first person has to be 62 and the second person has to be at least 58. Um, but because of our long wait list times, we do have people that have started joining the wait list in their 50s, knowing that I need to do my time. So I want to be able to get in there when when my name comes up. So um, actually, we, we had a resident that moved in last year and uh, her daughter kind of fought her on it a little bit. Mom, why are you doing this? Again, you're you're in such good health. What are you doing? <laughs> ah! And um the daughter ended up falling in love with Glen Eyre and said, this is awesome. And so for her 50th birthday, she gifted herself a waitlist application to Glen Eyre, knowing that when my name comes up and I reach the age requirement, I want to be there too. So <laughs> good. So you talked about earlier, you know, there's an entrance fee, uh, you know, upfront fee, and then there's a monthly fee. Mm -hmm. So could you walk us through, and we're fine with you doing it specific to your, your location, but 
So a person comes in, they're independently living in Mm -hmm. in a community Mm -hmm. and they pay this in all essence fee every month. What is covered in that fee? Like, what do they get, you know, because if they're trying to think through the budget as far as what they're going to be spending, what's included within that number typically? Sure. So the entrance fee, as I mentioned, that's really you're purchasing a a contract for care. And there's a large portion of that that is considered health care related. So that's why it's our residents refer to it as their insurance. Um, And then the monthly fee is based on the services that they'll be receiving every month. So at Glen Air, that is going to include the meal plan, weekly housekeeping, their utilities, all of the amenities, the, the, the fitness center, the craft room, the, the art classes. We try to be very inclusive at Glen Eyre. Um, I get the question a lot, well, what, where are your hidden fees? Um, there really are no hidden fees. For our residents, the monthly fee includes everything except their internet. Um, that's it. Everything else is included. So medical transportation, we provide transportation to different cultural activities when when they were being offered. Um, <laughs> we're looking forward to those again. Um, the maintenance to your apartment, everything is Glen Eyre's responsibility. So from that point on, that's why a lot of people decide to come in sooner than later. Um, they've just had one too many roof leaks and decide that's it. I'm done. Um, you know, so we find that that's something that can be a driver. Um, why people decide to come in sooner than later. If, if home ownership just becomes a little overwhelming, keeping up with the yard, um, and all of that is included in the, in the monthly service fee. Okay. So I got a little bit of a obscure question. We have a a client he's working with his dad and he's going to be moving into a facility. Um, and they're, they're looking at transitioning him from out of state into this area. And his big concern was, is that, you know, he's, he's a vegan. He didn't want, you know, so the food plan in his head was like, well, I don't want them feeding me things that I won't, you know, want to eat. And Mm -hmm. so how does, how does your particular place, how do y'all deal with that? If somebody comes in and they have a diet restriction, whether it be health wise or just personal preference but yet you've got this meal plan, so to speak. How does that work? Well, that is something where in our industry, that is something that has changed so much in the last 20 years. Our executive director always jokes that 27 years ago when Glen Eyre opened that you know, it was, it was Southern cooking. We're in the South. And, um, he always makes the joke that the residents would say, if I can't pronounce it, I shouldn't be eating it. So probably no quinoa and couscous and (laughs) things like that. You know, they wanted good fried chicken and, and, uh, and roast beef. Um, but that is, is just not the case anymore. Um, and so if you are in this industry and you're not keeping up with your dining program, um, that's not good. Um, We are actually, I mentioned uh, earlier that we're going through a really large renovation right now at Glen Eyre. And we are adding a third dining venue on this side of campus, renovating the main dining room. And then we have a cafe. We're doing this because we're moving more towards a cook to order. We have been doing cook to order for the last 10 years in our cafe. And the reason why is because people are coming in and, you know, food has always been important to to all of us. um, And it always has been. But, you know, when you're coming in and you don't see anything for you on the menu, that's a problem. And so now, you know, we have residents that are coming in and they're saying, you know, I I'm vegan, I'm vegetarian, I have to watch my sodium intake, or I have a food allergy. You know, this is something we see more and more. So by the time we finish our new expansion in 2023, we will have a full cook to order menu um, for the, for those folks that do have dietary restrictions. So that's really, really important to us. Yeah. Yeah. And that's good to hear. And I mean, that makes, I, I think that makes, you know, your industry is so much more marketable because that is a big, important, you know, piece of how everyone lives these days. They Absolutely. And they don't want to go outside of that. They've lived that way, you know, when they can handle everything, everything themselves, cooking meals mm-hmm. like that. So it'd be a huge change to walk into a CCRC and say, well, no, this is, you, these are your only options and you have to live within them. So right. I think 
great that everyone is adapting. Um, so on a different note, so what if, you know, someone comes in and one spouse is relatively healthy and the other one needs a different level of care? How does that get handled in this type of scenario when it comes to fees or is it even possible? Um, how, how does that get worked out? Right. Well, as I mentioned in our case, you know, we we are able to accept someone directly into assisted living and skilled nursing. We just have to feel really confident in those numbers to make sure that we have enough. Again, you know, we always say when you join the wait list, it's never a guarantee that you will become a resident because there is that health assessment for both people. However, and of course, we have ran into that situation before where, you know, a lot can happen in four years, 10 years while you're waiting for a community. So I always say to people, you know, if we have an opportunity to serve you, I promise you, we're going to be looking at that to see what we can do. And oftentimes it's a situation where, you know, unfortunately we can't serve you today. Um, but if you can hold tight for a few more months, we think we'll have some openings. And, and so we try to work with people that way. Um, but it, that's definitely not a guarantee, but, but we do our best if we can. Yeah, sure. Now, what if they both went in independent and then something occurs later down the road? So we got two independent livings and then one person needs some assistance while the other one doesn't, whether, you know, assisted living or whatever. So I guess mm -hmm. then, then you, the, the, does the healthy person, or do they say the healthy, the one who doesn't need care stay in their location? How do they, how does that work typically? Yep. And that's really, again, that's exactly what you're paying for is once you're in, you're in <laughs> knowing that, you know, Glen Eyre is going to help couples or individuals through that, through that transition. So what would happen in that case is the, the spouse that doesn't have healthcare needs, they would continue to reside in their independent living apartment. And then their spouse would move to a higher level of care, depending on what they needed, assisted living or skilled nursing. Our residents also have the option of hiring an in-home care agency if they would like to, to come into independent living. Obviously, our goal for our couples is they want to stick together uh, for as long as possible. And so they would have that option as well. But just to be clear, that would not be a Glen Eyre employee. That would be a separate arrangement that you would have from an outside agency. But we do have a few people that, that go that route. Okay, so now another one, and I don't know how specific we can get on this, but how does, so you'll have some people that enter a CCRC that have no level of long-term care insurance, and then you have the flip side where they have, you know, the, the Cadillac of long-term care insurances. How does that play out when, as far as, you know, what can it cover when you're in a CCRC? Sure. Yep. That's a great question as well. So, um, you know, of course, all long-term care insurance policies are different. Um, so I would start by saying that your long-term care insurance is not going to serve you in independent living. Um, that would only be if you ever needed a higher level of care. And oftentimes, long-term care policies are based on how much assistance you need. So it'll talk about your ADLs, which is your activities of daily living. And so depending on those requirements, it may or may not um, serve you in assisted living, but definitely in skilled nursing, because that's for an individual that needs almost around-the-clock care. That's when long-term care insurance will serve you. And if you, um, and I'm, I'm happy to share this after if for any of your clients that might want it, but our pricing, it actually lists the skilled nursing out as a daily rate. And the reason why we do that is because oftentimes on your long-term care insurance policy, it will give you a snapshot of we would cover whatever X amount of dollars a day. And so we have our daily amount broken out as well so that you can kind of compare apples to apples. Um, for example, right now, our skilled nursing, it's a discounted rate, again, because you paid an entrance fee, but it's $313 a day. So if you go back and look at your policy, and it's a, a, a Cadillac policy that says we will cover $300 a day, that means you would only be paying $13 a day out of pocket. That's a really good policy. Um, others, you know, it might be $150 a day. But um, certainly in skilled nursing, there are also policies out there that will cover in-home care. So that would be an option as well if you had a couple or an individual that, that is living in independent living and, and would like to stay there. If your long-term care 
long-term care insurance policy, you know, were to cover in-home care, you might go that route as well. That would be a, a really strong policy also. Well, Emily, I think we could probably sit here for two hours and just <laughs> we <ask>. could <laughs> because it's you know there's a lot to it, but at the same token, what you've given us, I think, is an extremely good high level overview, so that anybody listening kind of goes, oh, I get it now. I understand what that is. It even probably gives perspective on when they should start looking at these things and that understanding, uh, because I don't think people know that all the time, that that a lot of these communities, especially if they're the nice, good communities, uh, have big wait lists. So that's a thing. So if somebody's listening and they said, hey, you know what? I do want to check into this. I do want to talk about it. I would like to look at the facility. Um, what's the best way for them to get in contact with you or your team? Or what, what's kind of, can you walk us through what that would, how they would do that? Yes, absolutely. You know, of course, when, when folks call us, the first thing we normally would say is come in and see us. And unfortunately, because of the COVID restrictions, um, I haven't given a tour since March. So this is this has been wonderful, guys. Thank you for, for letting me share. <laughs> um, but we have been doing, I mean, there's a lot that we can share over the phone. There's a lot that we can share virtually. Um, you can always go to our website, which is www.glenair.org. Um, you can just give us a phone call. Um, I have been doing, and this kind of happened organically. Um, this was was not in my plans, but I've been doing a lot of home visits uh, for the last eight months where I've been visiting folks in their home. We socially distance, we wear our masks, we sit on their screen porch, um, and I'm able to share information that way. So, um, you know, we are certainly very looking forward to for the world to reopen so that we can invite people in, especially to show off our new renovation that will be completed soon. But you can always call. We have a very nice packet of information that we'd be happy to share. And, you know, for me, you know, the biggest takeaway that I hope people get from any conversation with me when they're looking at Glen Eyre or they're just starting their search for retirement communities in general is you said it, Raiden, that the good communities, they all have a wait list. And so, so, you know, again, when you think you're looking 10 years down the road, that is the perfect time um, to be doing it. You kind of want that in your back pocket to know that, you know, hopefully I'll have that to fall back on when we are ready. Very good. Well, again, uh, Merce and I both uh, certainly do appreciate you buying out some time of your day. And I'm sure our listeners are going to find this to be very, very uh, beneficial as well. So thank you so much, Emily. We really do appreciate it. <laughs> 